I want to go where culture is, like, like how New in the York, world did I raise such or at least snob. Connecticut or New Hampshire, well, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. Award season has kicked into high gear, and the Hollywood Reporter's film critics have chosen their favorite performances from 2017. From the career-topping work of an 87-year-old stage vet to the tour de force of a Chilean transgender actress and more, let's take a look at the five performances that made their mark on our critics. First up, we have a performance that sneaks up on you, according to critic John Frosch, who writes, you don't immediately notice how extraordinary Timothy Chalamet is in Luca Guadagnino's playful and profound coming-of-age masterpiece, Call Me By Your Name. Chalamet plays Elio, a brainy, brooding boy of 17 who falls in love with Oliver, his father's 24-year-old research assistant, played by Army Hammer. Frosch enthuses, this is a performance so subtle and unfussy, so startlingly free of the kind of mannered, methody intensity that often dooms the work of young thespes that you don't see it coming straight for your gut. The critic particularly praises a scene in which Elio watches Oliver dance at a nightclub, writing, In Chalamet's gaze is a gathering storm of conflicting impulses, desire, defensiveness, fear, fascination. Rarely has the tug of war between a teen's inner and outer selves been conveyed with such exhilarating immediacy. Next up, David Rooney's pick is Sam Rockwell as Officer Dixon and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, a performance which the critic says sneaks up on you in different ways, wrapping dim bulb ignorance, intolerance and hostility around a damaged core of human vulnerability and an eventual bid for absolution that's surprisingly affecting. In the film, Dixon suffers a devastating loss which Rooney sees as a chance for Rockwell to rebuild him piece by piece. Of this process, Rooney explains, the ache of grief and the sorrow of difficult reckonings ripple through this movie even as it continues to yield dark tragic comedy and the invigorating hints of the absurd. Nowhere are those forces more at play than in Rockwell's layered performance. You're not calling an officer of law a fucking prick in his own station house, Mrs. Hayes. Saoirse Ronan's turn in Lady Bird had Todd McCarthy reminiscing about her performance in Brooklyn, which reduced many of us to blubbering idiots. I wish that I could stop feeling that I want to be an Irish girl in Ireland. Now he says she's back superbly playing a very different kind of adolescent on the brink of independence in Greta Gerwig's directorial debut. You are so infuriated. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling. Oh, it's honey. perfect. Do you love it? McCarthy writes, by nature, error, and circumstance, Ronan's character in Brooklyn was proper and correct in language and behavior and was faced, in the end, with a choice between two men and two countries. In Lady Bird, Ronan, self-nicknamed Catholic high school senior who has been severely let down by two guys, must summon the fortitude to unshackle herself from her family ties in boring Sacramento and plunge into post-9-11 New York and college and whatever that may bring. The critic also offers that one of the keys to Ronan's performance is how a Astutely, she mixes sure-headedness with uncertainty. She makes you feel the agitation, the anxiety of her situation without ever losing sight of her confidence that she'll get out and on with her life. McCarthy further praises Ronan's performance by saying, the cusp between teenage immaturity and a borning adulthood has rarely been so shimmeringly caught. Up next, we have Lois Smith, of whom critic Sherry Linden says, as a performer, she's not easily summed up and neither are most of the characters she's brought to thrilling, unpredictable life. From 70s classic Five Easy pieces to this year's Lady Bird, Smith inhabits her role so fully and yet without a hint of actually affectation that she can infuse the simplest gesture with deep feeling, making each instant spontaneous and ephemeral. Lyndon cites Marjorie Prime as the film that has given Smith arguably her greatest big screen role as the actress plays two versions of the same woman. I'm not that far gone. The fading Marjorie and then her brand new holographic facsimile or Prime. Writes Lyndon, what's staggering about Smith's performance is that on each side of the human tech divide, she embodies something ghostly yet pulsing, and all of it is bracingly real. According to Stephen Dalton, Daniela Vega's career-making performance in A Fantastic Woman is something rare, a wondrously mature and sophisticated star turn from a young screen novice. In his review of the film, Dalton writes, thanks to her, Chilean director Sebastian Cielo's stylish thriller about the ostracism suffered by a recently bereaved transgender woman blossoms into a shattering and intimate portrait of loss, queer pride and grace under pressure. Vega plays Marina, a lounge singer and waitress whose blissful romance with middle-aged divorcee Orlando, played by Francisco Reyes, is cruelly curtailed when he suffers a fatal aneurysm. Viewed as a gold-digging freak and potential murder suspect by medical staff, police and Orlando's family, Marina is forced to maintain a facade of composure in the face of crushing grief. Dalton says, with forensic subtlety, Vega conjures something akin to the defensive armor of an exotic hunted creature accustomed to living every day in a hostile urban jungle. He also notes that while Vega commands the screen
screen alone, her interactions with other actors provide some of the film's most intense emotional flashpoints. To read the full articles covering THR's critics' picks for the best performances of 2017, head to THR.com and tell us, did your favorite performance make the list or who else would you like to have seen get a mention? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez.